I gotta tell you, this guy has influenced me so much and I think the thing that makes him really unique, and, and tell me if I mess this up, okay, is he's touched everything in college basketball. I mean, talk about some of the experiences that have helped shape your, your perspective. Well, I mean, I, I, when I first got to, uh, as a head coach in, in, in college, I was 28 years old. Um, I, I went to Florida when I was 30. Um, I had I've had a chance to uh, experience losing seasons. I've had a chance to experience uh, winning seasons. I've experienced going to the NIT. I've experienced losing in a national championship game. I've experienced uh, losing in the Elite Eight, winning the Elite Eight, experienced uh, winning a national championship. And as you kind of go through that journey, you start to get a different perspective of, you know, what is this really all about? You know, what, what, what is my purpose as a coach? What am I called to do? What does a coach really look like? And who am I supposed to be? And I think that my mindset shifted as I went through a lot of these different experiences, uh, you know, in my life. Uh, as, as we got a lot of men out here, you know, when you're young and you, you have a family, you know, you can get overwhelmed with the pressure of, of having to provide for your family, provide for your children, and realizing that at the end of the day, the more you win, the more you're going to get. And, and can I ask you that, too? Because yep. one of the things you said is it, it, the reality of the situation in college is when you win big, really the only person to benefit guarantee, from a guarantee, like your guaranteed benefit is the head coach. And I think that's really important at college level in relationship with players is because when, if, if, if you're part of a program and the program really wins at a very, very high level, in a lot of ways, the, the coach is rewarded. And in a lot of ways, sometimes the players are not rewarded. And I think having a sensitivity and an understanding to that, I went through a, a situation that um, I, I learned a lot from. Uh, I think it was in my third or fourth year of Florida, we, we had lost to, in the national championship game. And uh, I had some players uh, on our team that had the opportunity to go uh, to the NBA and I actually had signed a, a, an extension, a new contract and in a lot of ways it almost some, in some ways put a divide in me with, with the players and, and what ended up happening was there was agents and people around that were coming at these guys saying, listen, your coach just did what was best for himself, you need to think about doing what's best for yourself. And, and that ended up becoming some of the topic of discussion in those situations, and it forced me as a coach to have to stay, take a step back and really look at that. And, um, Can late, I interject one sure. thing? Because one of the things you talk about is there are so many different factors outside that hinder a player being trust willing to their coach, especially with high-profile guys. Can you speak to that? There, there, there's no question because I think there's been a real major shift as it relates to, at least in college basketball players, that it used to be you go to college, you're being given a full scholarship, you're getting your education, and that's the payback, that's the reward for being a good basketball player. And I think because of opportunities professionally overseas and in the NBA, the shift now has gotten to players looking at, okay, I have a window that I am gonna be athletically capable of earning an income. And if I get a degree in business or economics or whatever it may be, I could never make the same kind of money that I could make by being a professional basketball player, even overseas. So I'm gonna weigh my options right now and I'm maybe only gonna be able to play till I'm 30, 35 years old. I got the rest of my life to work. I can also always go back to school. I'm gonna capitalize on my athletic ability right now and I'm gonna make some choices and decisions in my life that best suit and fit me from a financial standpoint, and, and, and I totally you know, understand that. There's been really a, a, a big shift, I think, uh, in a lot of ways uh, with players towards that because there is a certain life expectancy they have with their athletic talents and abilities. And, and a lot of times the elite freshmen are almost shamed now for coming back. Yeah, the, the, the whole thing you know, is really, it's really interesting because when, when, when kids come into college, and, and especially in basketball, and they don't finish their freshman year and they're not going to the NBA, a lot of times they're perceived in their own mind as, as being failures or a lack of success. And I think to what we talked a little bit earlier, everybody's life journey is different. You know, everybody's journey is different. Everybody gets there maybe in a different way. Some make it, some don't. 
But I think for a player to feel that way, I think one of the things that really has been eye-opening to me in talking to players over the years is the enormous amount of pressure they feel in a lot of ways, especially in difficult financial situations, to be the financial provider for their family. And if they don't do that, they feel like they're a disappointment, they're a failure, they're letting their families down. And a lot of times, it may not be their families even putting that kind of pressure on them. It may be just how they internalize the situation. Or if there's, if there's issues inside the family, if I make it, all these problems are going to go away and my family's going to be great. Or I'm going to feel that kind of love. And I, I think that the biggest challenge I think I deal with when young players when I was in college was, and I think it may be the case for all of us as individuals, in separating you know, what I do with who I am is this idea that if I perform well, I am loved. And if I don't perform well, I'm unloved. And one of the things I've always tried to talk about with our players is if I, 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 I looked back and really tried to write down some things, what were the characteristics of the best teams that I've ever been around? Like, what did those teams have? What did they look like? What was missing from other teams? And the first thing was, there was an enormous amount of love inside the team for one another. There was a lot of love for each other. The other thing that there was is there was an enormous amount of care. There was personal and individual care for each other. And the third thing was each and every guy on the team was accepted for who they are. And if you think about that from our own personal lives, if you walked around every single day and said, I feel loved, I feel accepted, and I feel cared for, our life would be really, really enriched. But because those things are lacking in all of our lives to some degree, we think through achievement and through success, the more that we get adoration, affirmation, and people telling us how great we are, we think that that actually fills up what's missing and lacking in our life. So there's this unbelievable pendulum swing with players where I, I play well, I get a lot of love on social media. I don't play well, I'm unloved. So what happens is their focus now becomes on performance, performance, playing well, playing well, because if I play well, I'm going to feel better about them myself. And what happens is it's an emotional roller coaster ride for these guys, you know, from game to game. One minute they're excited in practice the next day because they play great. The next day in practice they're walking around and moping and it, it, it can be very, very challenging, and, and I, I've, I've seen players that I've coached you know, in, in, in social media settings that have actually broken down and cried with things that they've seen, but there's a good and there's a bad to everything, so if you're getting a lot of this attention, understand there's another side of it as well. And, and I think that that's where it's been eye-opening for me, because when I was first exposed to how Billy coaches, I, I just felt overwhelmed with my inadequacy. And you have a sophisticated approach on how you get guys to open up and share their feelings with one another. Can you talk about that? Well, one of the things that I've really figured, I wouldn't say figured out, but I really had to give a lot of thought. And I, to be honest with you, there's been you know, different times in, in, in coaching that I've been embarrassed. And it hasn't been embarrassed in terms of on the court. It's been embarrassed off the court. And, and what I mean by that was, we sit there as coaches and we preach being a team, being connected, being committed, caring for each other, helping each other, you know, lifting each other up, going through all these things. And we were having some issues inside of our team one year. There were some problems. And uh, we, we were not a very good team at all. Uh, there was a lot of judgment being passed. Uh, we had a group of guys that were really competitive on the court, but off the court, they, they, they lacked some things, and we had some guys that were just model citizens off the court, and then when they got on the court, they weren't the hardest working guys, and it was just a lot of judgment being passed, and you know, what we ended up doing was we, um, we had some, some team sessions and some team meetings, and we actually got into a little bit of the players talking about their story and where they had come from, and there were some things that came out in some of those meetings to me that I was embarrassed about because I had coached some of these players for two and three years, and I wasn't even aware of some of the internal pain that these guys were dealing with at such a deep emotional level. And it dawned on me, I'm asking this player to totally trust and invest into the team. And there's no question with what he's experienced in his life. Trust is a major issue. There's no possible way he can even remotely come close to being a good teammate. He's incapable of doing it. He needs help to get there. And we tried it to, at least once a week, uh, during the course of the seasons, 
is have these me meetings where we could openly talk about some of these things. Now, from a, from a male's perspective, you know, society tells us to act like we have everything under control. And society tells us don't be vulnerable. And, and I really be believe that being vulnerable is being powerful. One of the things I thought about, you know, I, I try to talk to our team about these things because sometimes all these players come from different home situations. Some are difficult, some are unbelievable. It's just all sorts of different backgrounds and I'm sure all of us out here can, can, can speak to that. I have my team come to my house and I'm sitting there one day. I've got four kids, great wife, nice house, guys come over, food, everything else. And in a lot of ways, it was a show. And I was saying to myself, what kind of message as a coach am I sending to my team? Because it looks like we have the quote unquote model family and there's no challenges or issues inside my family. And I, the next day I, I, I went back there and players made comments like asking them questions, boy, I wish my family was like that or looks like you guys get along so well. And I said, guys, I said, you know, I've done you guys a disservice because we're just like anybody else there's dysfunction, there's problems, there's issues, there's challenges in every one of our relationships. But the one thing I would tell you that makes it work is that there's a commitment to each other. So don't be delusional by walking in there and saying that this looks perfect, because it's not. What makes it move closer to getting better and to our family being the best it can be is the commitment to do that. And, and, and that's what I try to talk to them about you know, at a different level, but I think when you talk about being vulnerable, I think it's very, very important that the head coach is vulnerable in settings with the players. I don't think you can sit there as a coach and take a step back and ask somebody to open up their heart and things that are challenging them or holding them back without you talking about your own challenges and things in your life that have held you back. And uh, that was just, you know, some of the things we've tried to do with our guys. And, and talk about how empathy helps with judgment. I think empathy is huge. You know, one of the things that happened in some of these meetings was there were things that guys and players were very ashamed of. They were ashamed about. They were embarrassed about. Um, I watched players break down. I watched players cry. I watched players really open up their heart and be actually terrified and petrified to even express themselves in a lot of different ways. And what ended up happening was an enormous amount of empathy came over the room. And it actually started to make sense of why we as people act the way we do. And it made sense to these guys that why somebody acted the way they did. I had a player uh, on, a, on, on a team that was really having a, a difficult time being compared to one of the great NBA players of all time. And he was never living up to that and never could but he felt like in his heart he needed to because that was the expectation. And as he was going through this process and he, he would get in these bad moods, he was a terrible teammate, he would get frustrated and he never told anybody about what he was experiencing. And once he did, it gave everybody in the room a better perspective that when he doesn't play well, what he's actually having to emotionally deal with and now the empathy part came into play where people could make him feel actually a lot better about himself and there was a that, that love, care, and acceptance, I just said, you know, he was still being accepted by his teammates even though he wasn't living up to the expectation that maybe others had placed on him. 